Uh, going back to Gremlins, you were 24 when that was sold. Yeah. Uh, do you remember how you found out that the script was sold and was going to be produced? And what was your reaction when that happened? Um, I got a call from uh, my agency telling me that Spielberg loved the script. He wanted to meet with me, so I was just flabbergasted, obviously, and I was blown away. And I waited a couple days for his call, and then it took us about three weeks to meet. And uh, it was a very, uh, it was an interesting meeting. It was, uh, I'd waited three weeks for, to meet with him, and we sat down, and I, I said hello to him, and he said hello to me. And just as we were about to start the meeting, I'd waited this long time, his assistant came into the room and said, Stephen, can you come here for a second? And I, I was waiting, I waited a long time, and then his assistant came back and said, uh, uh, I'm sorry, we're going to have to cancel the meeting today. I, Stephen just found out John Belushi died. And I was like, oh, God. And I'll never, for, I mean, I'll never forget that day. That was, um, it was I mean, it was awful, and it, it was just a, a, a memorable for a lot of reasons. And that was it. Uh, that was our first meeting. So. Was that a very stressful time for you when Gremlins came out? Uh, no, no, it wasn't stressful at all. God, it was, it was fun. I mean, I, I'd just gotten married. Um, we had a big party in Chicago. It was a lot of fun. I mean, it's always fun when people want to go see your movie because you can go, you can go see it with crowds, and it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. No, it wasn't stressful at all. I, uh, in fact, I thought I saw it as the beginning of my continued, you know, career, so I could continue to make more movies. Now, talking about uh, some of your other movies, Young Sherlock Holmes and Heartbreak Hotel. Uh -huh. Now, those were, you kind of tackled characters that were well-known, you know, Sherlock Holmes and Elvis Presley. Mm -hmm. Was that kind of a touchy thing? Uh, well, Sherlock Holmes wasn't a problem because Sherlock Holmes was literary. Elvis, uh, something I never knew going into it, would always be a problem because people, I mean, he is the, uh, I think he's the most widely known celebrity in the world. With, uh, I mean, it's just his face is, is more familiar than anyone else's. So casting an actor for that role is almost almost impossible. So I, I decided to go against grain and cast someone who was a good actor as opposed to someone who looked like him. A lot of people then, I think, just couldn't grasp the movie because they had such a familiar version of Elvis in his mind. Also, the movie was, I, I made the mistake early, an, an early director, uh, shooting my entire script, which turned into a three-hour and 15-minute movie. When that was cut down, the movie to me, when I see the movie now, it doesn't. It's not the movie I, I, I originally saw. I mean, the three-hour version of the movie works much better. It's a much more cohesive movie. Uh, but dealing with with Elvis is always a, a guy like Elvis Presley is always a problem. And I, <laughs> I learned a lesson that I'll never do a rock biography or any sort of biography of anyone who's that well known because you just can't, it, you just can't please everyone uh, with a situ in a situation like that. Achieving the fame that you have now, when you went back to your high school reunion, how did you find people reacting to you? Or were they mostly aware that you had become famous? Yeah, uh, well, uh, people, <laughs> people at my high school reunion were very nice to me. I always got along real well with most of the kids in my class back then, and 10 years wasn't a long time. So uh, we got along real well. They wanted me to sit at some head table. Um, because I was some sort of distinguished alumni, but I, I, I wouldn't do that because I thought, this is crazy. I went to school with these people. We knew each other. We're all friends. I'm not going to sit in front of everybody like that. But I did, they did ask me to come back, which I did to host the, uh, to MC a talent show they had, which uh, they brought back after all these years. And that was a lot of fun to do. It was a four-hour deal. They had an alumni talent show in a huge place, and we had like 1,500 people. So that was fun. It's always fun to go back uh, to see your old friends and to to visit these places even after you do something a little different than everyone else. Because once you get over the initial nervousness, everyone's nice to each other. Okay. Well, what is your attitude about sequels? Because when Gremlins uh, 2 came about, I imagine you were invited to participate with yeah. that. I, I'm not a big fan of sequels, unless, unless the characters warrant a sequel, unless the characters in the movie, um, if there's a reason for, for them to exist again, or if there's a better story than the first movie, or or if there feels like there should be some sort of continuing saga. Gremlins, Gremlins was uh, a story that was purely about good and evil, um, and it worked as a, as a sort of a combination horror film, satire of Frank Capra Christmasisms, and all of those things. And it's, uh, it worked as, as it did once. To do it again just didn't make sense to me. Hey, Chris, we're doing a feature on... Uh what happens to American movies when they're released overseas. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, have any of your films in their overseas incarnations gone some unusual changes? 
I remember um, young Sherlock Holmes opened in Australia as Temple of Fear. Yeah. Uh, that was probably the weirdest. I, uh, I, Adventures in Babysitting opened as a night on the town in Paris. Um, it's usually the name changes that because uh, they don't because the translation is a little different. So um, that 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 usually changes. I I haven't seen, I, I haven't had the the pleasure of seeing any of my films dubbed in a foreign language, which I think might be really interesting. Uh, but I haven't had the pleasure of seeing that. And one real quick question: What kind of mementos have you kept over the years from your movies? Just little things you put on the, uh, the the kitchen table. I'm real bad about that. I got to tell you, I always I always plan on saving stuff, and I never save it. I I, I have some of the Gremlin stuff. I have some. Gr <coughs> I'm sorry. I have some Gremlin slippers. Uh, I have some little Gremlin <laughs> dolls, and that's about it. Okay. Um, what else do I have? Nothing else. I don't. I just don't keep. I keep my scripts and a copy of the movie. That's about all. Okay.